My name is Seven Capello. I am a furniture designer. I've been based in London, in the UK, for 10 years, where I've been working um, in my own studio for the last like five or six years. And then three months ago, I decided to move to Mexico City for no reason, just because I wanted to live somewhere new to me. And so I'm here now. And I'm going to, try, I'm going to show you the work that I've been doing in the last five, six years. I think it's quite recent work. It's a bit strange because normally I try to pr present the most recent project, but that's also the point. I haven't worked for the last three months, and uh, that was wanted. I wanted to take some time to like, reflect upon my practice and think about what's coming next uh, in my career. Sometimes in the studio, I guess, I, tr I just redesign, which is an activity I love. I do many furniture, um, and then um, I've designed this uh, desk system in glass and metal, um, which is clearly referencing this small secretaire, like small desk, um, designed by Joe Ponti. And I think sometimes for me it's enough to, for designer to update and create a contemporary language for an existing object. I think that's absolutely like a valid um, activity. Um, I'm going to try to talk a, lot, a little bit about the references from my work, so sometimes redesigning and getting inspiration from masters, but also most of the time being really inspired by the mundane environment. This is the town where I grew up. It's called Sergi. It's really not so nice, but the station is really amazing. I've always been fascinated by this big clock. Um, and I, I wouldn't be able to say exactly how, but I really think all the observation you, you do as a designer, they kind of fit back into your work. Um, so in two, I guess two years ago, I've designed this clock for a small English brand, uh, which is made of different layers of different material that compose uh, like the structure of the clock and also the function. And everything is screwed together. I love things that are like, kind of connected together and where you can clearly see the assembly process. So the glass that is the face of the clock is connected to the hours, which is created by the plywood. And then there is an aluminum face underneath, etc. That's quite a beautiful picture. It's, it's what you can read. It's the, the minute hands of a really big clock in Liverpool in, in the UK. That's quite, a, that, that's quite a specific project, this one. I've created a company which is called Manico, which is, I guess, based in the UK, um, which produced handles and hardwares for fitted furniture, so for kitchens and dressings. And the first collection was made of marble pieces. Um, so th on the left, you can see the final product, and on the right, some of the pr pr primary drawings. That's the first collection. And the story behind it is I, w I was visiting some marble place in Italy, um, and marble generates a lot of waste. Like, if you want to do one piece in marble, you actually have to generate a lot of waste, which is most of the time smaller. Um, so most of marble manufacturers, they end up with like small bits. So I was thinking about what we could do with this material, which doesn't really have a, a value in a way. So we could use it for really cheap. And instead of maybe designing the entire kitchen in marble, you could have really plain, simple doors and, and fittings, but have like marble details. Um, and I think where the material comes from has always been a super big inspiration for me. So whether it's the, the, the quarries on the left in Italy or this cork field uh, in Portugal, I had the chance to work with some cork manufacturers. Um, and the, the, that's really such an amazing process and such a beautiful sort of history behind cork because it takes years to grow. So maybe this tree is like 50 years and that's the first harvest of really good cork. And so I always find those places like really, really inspiring. That's on the left, one of the projects that has been done with cork. So it's cork agglomerate. It's not solid cork. Um, I think that's something I do a lot <laughs> in the studio, which is a bit strange. It's like between drawings and illustration 
and it tries to, I tr always try to kind of grab the essence of the object. So you, can, you have to imagine that obviously this drawing has been made months before this happens. Um, and just working with like collage, between collage drawings and models, model is like a huge, 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 huge part of my everyday life, I guess, in the studio and drawings. Um, this project is the project I graduated with from the RCA. And it really, really started from not from the, wh where the material was coming from. I was doing a research about where wood was coming from and whether we could access or create or generate local wood. So like a wood that would be in your, you know, like within, f within five miles radius or within 10 miles radius. And I soon understood that in London, there was millions of Christmas trees that were coming in every year. So, and what was fascinating is that after Christmas, in January, most of the Christmas trees are being thrown and dumped. So that was actually like a huge amount of wood that I could access. And I also thought it was super interesting to think about the economy be behind Christmas and how as a designer I could generate my own economy within it, almost as a parasite. I, 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 I really believe as designer altogether we should, we should really try to create and generate new economies. So that's some of the examples of the furniture that could be created. And I guess the research I did when I graduated was a little bit about the object. And I re at the time, I was really like, ah, oh, we should not do objects, fuck objects. So there was like a little bit of, of products or furniture that were made out of the wood. But for me, the most important was like the process behind it. And actually, Christmas tree, they can grow in the UK. And they can grow in London latitude. They, it's a really a good climate for them to grow. So we could imagine growing them in the cities. London has been going through like really big regeneration of its urban fabrics. So we could use, that, that was my idea at the time, uh, which was almost eight years ago. We could use like part plots of lands um, in the city to grow Christmas tree that grow really fast, actually, up to four or five years, you can have decent sized tree, then use them in the community as Christmas tree, and then maybe reuse them to create bigger infrastructure. You know, one million tree, like you could build a theater or cinema or um, kindergarten or whatsoever. And then in the meantime, this unused land could become a park. So I guess I like behind, I like behind the idea of um, one object, one single artifact. I like to think about the system that, believe, that kind of lays underneath and where it belongs, you know? And that's, that was really like a sort of cornerstone project for me. That's more experiment of using the needles as a fiber with the resin. And then always a little bit looking at traditional means of construction or fabrication, but maybe use them in, in really untraditional ways. I think we're here tonight, and I think Decode is providing an amazing platform for designers to meet, for you guys to meet, and for me to meet you, and for you to meet me. And that's, that's super fascinating, because the aim is really to create a scene, no? to create like a creative scene, create creative scene, um, where ideas can ex be exchanged, where interaction can happen, and literally where, where the future of your profession can start to emerge. No? And I really think we should be super creative in the way we think about the design studio, the design, the role of the designer in a way. Like we, there is, there is new ways that we, we should invent, new economies that we can create. And I think Mexico is a, as far as I can understand, I'm quite a newbie here, um, is a really interesting place for that. Some tables and some bench, whatever. <laughs> I, like the, I like this drawing. The tables and the bench, they are now produced for a Jap by a Japanese company, which is called Ishinomaki Laboratory. And I like this drawing because we, we are two drawings. There is me and Keiji, who uh, direct the factory. And I love drawings. Like, that's the thing I do all day long. Some drawings on the right of a chair. That's a chair. I, I've been asked by a company in the UK that produced this chair normally, the one on the left, right? Um, and they asked me to redesign their, this this sort of really pub chair. I guess it might, ah, oh, 
I mean, everyone knows this chair, no? And it's, it's quite beautifully made, and it has a little bit of sense of craft behind it, because it's, everything is turned, and there is the rattan and the seat, which is an amazing material. But we also had to deal with like, economic constraints, so we had to provide this feeling of quality and craftsmanship behind the chair, behind the new proposal, but we also had to lower the price of production so much. So I came up with this idea of using this wooden lattice. So it's really thin wooden dowels. I think it's, the thinner is like eight millimeters. And it's steam bent, because that's obviously something they do and they're really good at doing. And it goes through a bigger section, which I think is 14 millimeters. And so it has this kind of weave, woven feeling, which I guess, I hope, bring this sort of craft, craftsmanship quality to the object. While the, the seats and the legs are really plain and the construction sort of easy for them to, to construct. That's, that's one of the objects I've designed I really like. And it exists in colors as well. But which, and it doesn't sell in colors because apparently the rule is if you do a wooden object, people would only buy it in wood. It doesn't matter if it's... They would never buy like colored wooden chairs which is a shame because I think they're really beautiful in colors, but they don't sell at all. Um, that's one of the last projects I've been doing, working on in London. Uh, it's a stool. So I, I, sh I put those pictures so that you really see the way I work. Like, it's true that I do quite a lot of drawings, but I also do a lot of models, and I really don't use models. I mean, I don't, I don't use models to do like final sort of presentation object. I really sculpt in 3D in cardboard most of the time, cardboard and tape. So that was like, that's how the, the, the shape for this bar stool, I've been asked to design a bar stool for this French company that does a lot of tube bending. And that's the model in the middle. Um, and so that's like PVC models to check proportions, heights, everything. Like I really almost don't work in 3D. I try to actually touch the computer as little as possible. But sometimes we do, obviously. But that's the last step, always the last step. And then some drawings. And we're, we're doing the chair now, which maybe is going to be like this. I'm not so sure. Um, OK, a project that is really dear to me is I've been designing um, public space furniture for a town near London. Um, and the reason why it's really near to me is I really believe public space is a completely uh, jungle territory for designer. Like no one is really interested in designing public spaces. And I think we spend probably, it depends where we live, but we actually spend quite a lot of time in the public space, um, whether it's inside the car or in public transport or, you know, walking. I guess walking is not really common here in Monterrey, but in, in the FA, people you know, really walk a lot. And so I was really interested at the beginning to design this object, which is called a bollard in English. And so that's some of the um, formal experimentation. I was really interested in creating a system that would be able to adapt really easily to what is already there, because we were not going to change the entire, um, the entire public space space furniture for the town, but just change slowly, slowly where things got broken and basically just replace. And I think that was like a super interesting also like um, way of thinking. So I wanted all the objects that I designed to work very well with the existing. Um, that's more models on the left. That's one of the final objects, uh, which is a bollard, but it can also be used to lock a bike. Um, that's actually me on the bike. <laughs> But that's not what you should look at. On the left, there is this bollard. As you can see, it uses the same base. So all of them are composed with the same off-the-shelf off section, steel section. And then the top can be interchanged. So this one, this bollard has been designed to be placed along all the cycle lane. And it, it can contain small and simple information, like turn right or um, traffic lights or it had three. Oh, yeah, the, the, just the one with the bike logo to just like carry on. Uh, those are bike racks that has been designed for this town. 
So that's one of the bollards as well, same system, but the head is slightly wider, so you can really easily and comfortably sit on it, and it has been designed for all the pedestrian area around the town. So slowly, slowly, as the older ones get broken or damaged, we were replacing them with the new ones. I really love this picture, and because it's, for me, it's like reality, you know? I, you know, you spend time in the studio designing things, but then there are like two Polish dudes that are setting up your, the work you've designed in the street with like dirty hands and concrete and a big hammer, and they're hammering it, and you're so precious about everything. But uh, yeah, actually, that's just reality, which I think is super beautiful. So that's one of the bollards. That's the town. It's, it's a really beautiful town near, near London. More formal experiments, but I'd, more bike racks being used. I, I love when like your, your work doesn't belong to you anymore, and it belongs to the people that are using it. And most of the time, it's actually quite chaotic in the way you, they use it. But that, I don't know. That's also like the beauty behind it, I believe. And here, that stage picture, so there, there was a system of um, planters um, that are being used, different sizes, different height. The bin at the back, <clears throat> which is not the most successful, I think. A, a, a system of bench, which also is not really successful, in a way that they, they got damaged really quickly, they were not amazingly well built. But because the... The project was so organic, so because we were just like changing slowly, slowly, one by one, the furniture that was being damaged, we stopped, for instance, we, we stopped with those bins. They are, they're not being installed anymore. But the bollards and the bike racks are really being used a lot, which is amazing. Okay, more pictures of the bollards. Um, okay, let's watch a little bit of this video. Let's, let's leave it two minutes more. Um, you know, earlier I was telling you about finding ways for designers to find projects and to create their economy so that you get paid and you are able to eat and you're young but you still have projects to do and all those things are really amazing. This project, I really initiated it and I, I approached an art center, like a gallery, art gallery which is in this town, and I said, okay, I've got this project that I want to do with you, and they were like, okay, let's try to convince the borough. But you know, like the municipality of this town, it's a big thing, and public space projects are so complicated to put in together. But after two years of proposals and meetings, of like a, just a simple, stupid idea that I had that we should design public space furniture, like it exists, it's in the town, and it's so rewarding for me. And so I would absolutely not hesitate if you have ideas, if you have creative thinkings in mind, try to make it happen. It's, it's, it's possible. Okay, shall we go back to the PDF? I, I wanted to show you a bit of my work and a bit of things I like. And there are th those two guys that I really love. It's, they're called Peter Seville and Ben Kelly. Ben Kelly is an amazing um, designer, interior designer. And he, you probably know New Order. Um, and you probably know Joy Division, the, the, group, the band from Manchester. Um, well, I think in 
I don't want to say a date, but in the 80s, they opened a club where they were playing music and it was a live um, venue. And Ben Kelly designed it with literally like really small budget, really super creative ideas behind. And the, I really recommend you check it out. It's actually called Hacienda. The, that's the name of the club. And it's, it's really an amazing, beautiful place. It doesn't exist anymore. It's been destroyed. But I've always been really inspired by those two creatives, so Peter Seville and Ben Kelly. And I don't know how, again, it's not like direct links, but that's just things that feeds your work. I guess you could, one could see a link between one of their artwork for a band that I really love and a series of lamps that I designed for a gallery in, in Paris. Um, and the idea behind it, they, they commissioned me to do a series of lightings, uh, s rather small lightings and different sort of typologies. So maybe this one could be a point, pointing towards a wall and create an indirect light, and this one could be on a desk. And the idea behind it is really to work with like light itself. So the lamps are made of, for me, the light itself. So transparency, reflection, and colors, uh, which are the phenomenon generated by light. So I decided to work with this really thick glass, um, like architectural glass, and perforated metal. I have an absolute passion for perforated metal um, because it makes the material so light. It makes it see-through. You can have a color, which is then reflected around the material itself. It kind of creates a space, no? Almost like a little bit like um, I mean, it's a, it's a, it, it goes from 2D to 3D all of a sudden, which I'm really, I'm really interested in as an idea. And obviously, you understood that this led to the first project I, I shown you, the desk, which is for the same, the same gallery. That's the collection of lightings. They're really simple objects. They have really like quite a specific language. I really believe that sometimes designer, our, our work is to like create a contemporary language. That's what we're here for. And I, I don't believe design is a, is a medium or a media for self-expression. And it's not, and I think if this is understood as like my own expression, I think it's, I hope it's like misunderstood. I really believe we are like all together working towards like building up a, a new, a new world, a new material world, because we're like slowly, slowly replacing, adapting, um, um, how do you say? Um, when you get when you get f things done in a better way. So yeah, uh, more lightings. It's some lighting, some lightings, perforated metal. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna say anything. It's a big lamp. That's it. So I hope you guys have questions.